Hey guys, it's going to Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to give you a second video on the beginners of procedural generation with patterns. So I'm going to hit play so that you can see what this is doing. And if you didn't watch the previous video, make sure that you watch it. But we're basically creating different shapes and the shapes are completely procedural. We're creating them through code and I can change, you know, if I wanted to change the radius of a shape, I could. If I could change, if I wanted to change, you know, the star width. I could change it, I could change this one as well, which is going to be the end width of the line. I can also change how many points we have. If I wanted to make it more, you know, to have more points, I could change that as well. I can also tell the system, you know, how frequently to change it. If I want to change it every second, I could change it every second. If I wanted to also add more points and then, and then you know, change how frequently it changes. So we just have a lot of different ways that we could change this. I can also, you know, create a triangle if I wanted to create a triangle or you know different shapes so some of the things that i added in this video are different properties so i have two new properties in here one of them it's going to be the smooth point in seconds and i just you know i've been experimenting with different math and and this one gives you some really cool effects so if we go back in here and increment how many points we have so we're looking at the outer basically at this one right here that i'm pointing with my mouse so if I wanted to change the smooth point in seconds, we're going to be getting some really cool effects. You can see that now we're getting, you know, we're getting some lines. And if I increment how many points we have, you can see how we're creating, you know, just different, different effects for, for the lines. If I wanted to change the smooth point factor, now we're starting to get some point and, and just, dif you know, different looks for, for the shapes that we're creating. So if I wanted to do something like that and also change the smooth points in seconds, and also modify the how many points we have. You can see how we're getting some, you know, some different effects. So let's go ahead and, and disable the other one so that we can focus on the one that we're working on so that you guys can see what we can create. I'm going to increment the points that we have. So right now we have it set to, you know, 496. I can also change, you know, make the starting points a little bit bigger and maybe the ending points a little smaller. Or we can also make it big. I can also change the, the factor here can see how that is changing and let's go ahead and increment decrement this decrement how how much width we have so you get the idea of you know what we can do with something like this with a system like this you know if we were to animate this you can see that we're getting you know we're maybe creating a portal where we're getting into the portal and if i go ahead and decrement this you can see how we're getting you know some diff some very variety of effects by just making changes to to some of these parameters I also show you that I could increment the and decrement the actual radius. So if we wanted to go to something like much bigger than that, I could do that. And if we decrement how many points we have and see how we're getting, you know, variety. Could also change this and change the factor. Now we're getting lines. Or we could do, you know, maybe about four different points. And now we can get, you know, we're getting a lot of different effects now we're getting a line moving around let's go ahead and do maybe about eight points let's double it and we can decrement this so you can see that now we're getting you know it's a, it's a completely different shape i didn't have that before and if i change these values we're getting just just i think i think doing things like this is just really fun so look at that that gives you a completely different effect i could clone that and now let's say that i offset it I don't have the offset working just yet because I need to add the transform position in order to do that. But let's go ahead and decrement this one. I'm going to go to this one, decrement that one. And maybe on this one, we just change it. Let's go ahead and make it greater. There we go. And how about making this one about like that? And there you go. So you get the idea. We just get, you know, a variety of effects with the curves by just adding some math that is going to allow us to do you know a lot of different things by creating content procedurally so let's go ahead and look at some of the code that i added so that you so that it makes sense to you so the some of the properties that i added for this in order to do what i what i just show you is a, a variable called smooth points in seconds and i also added another another variable called smooth point factor and i'm going to show you how those so this one it's going to allow us to go from zero to one and i'm using a flow there and I'm starting them at zero. And then the, the smooth point factor, the way that that's working is I'm basically using a modulus and then 
if the modulus gives me the division of the modulus gives me a zero then at that point i create i basically smooth the line so i'm going to show you how some of that math looks like so this is the same code that i had before i didn't change any of that all i did is i refactor the vector tree that i was creating so this was getting set on the set position of the line render so what i did is say okay well i'm going to move that up into its own variable i'm still going to create a vector tree I'm going to grab the line exposition. I'm going to, you know, sum the offset. And then I'm also going to get the line Y position. Also sum the Y offset and then, you know, use my zero there. But I wanted to do something different to the way that I was calculating the new point. So instead of just calculating the new point and just make it very rigid, which we can still do if the, if the smooth point is zero, it's not going to go through, it's not going to go through this, this code. So that functionality is still going to work, which is the functionality that you see right here if I hit play. Mo some of these ones, I guess most of these ones have zero, so I didn't change any of that functionality. But if this if this value right here is greater, then at that point I'm gonna I'm gonna start you know applying some of that functionality, and that's why you're seeing some of those lines crossing in there because I'm saying okay if i is greater than zero, the reason why I did this is because I wanted to only apply this if the value of i was greater than zero. So the way this is gonna work is if I do something like this, if I do let's say that i equal i equal one and then i do i equal two and then we do also i think it'll make more sense if i do it this way equal three but let's say that the value of the small smooth point factor is 10. so the value of this is going to be 10. so let's say that we are have we have i equal to three so if we're if i equal to three and then a smooth point factor equal to 10 that's not going to be equal to zero the the only way that this is going to be equal to zero is if i is equal to 10 so if i equal to 10 and a smooth point factor equal to 10 at that point i'm gonna i'm gonna have a zero so that way we're going to be calculating this i'm gonna say okay line render get me the position grab the value of i and then subtract the, the smooth point factor so what's going to happen is i'm going to get the position basically a previous position and then i'm grabbing the previous point and grabbing that previous point which i'm passing into the alert function and then i'm also getting the new point which i calculated before and then I'm passing in the, the smooth points in seconds. And then I'm basically setting, okay, you know, now that I have that point calculated, grab that new point value and set it to the new point. So this is just some math that I that I was experimenting with. And, and that actually worked really well because I'm getting some more variety. So if we go ahead and hit play, let's go ahead and change a couple of them at the same time. So if I go here and I were to change, you know, I were to change some of these values. What if we set this, let's say that this was a value of 20, of 10 and i think that incrementer is fine but then as we go here let's go ahead and change how many points we have i'm also going to be changing and how about that so something like that i think it'll look look good so we're getting different shapes and it's just you know they're all creating dynamically i think you get the idea of if i start rotating this now we're getting some different variation of the of the effects so that just shows you, you know, what you can do by playing with some of the, the, you know, the randomization and also some of the captures that I did in the code. So this code can be changed to anything that you like. I just wanted to change it in a way that we're capturing the new point and also the, new, the previous point. So if you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check me out in Patreon.com where I'm basically going to be posting the new version of this code. Thank you, guys.